Brad here, Chief of Warriors, coming at you with another video. Today we are going to go over growth hormone deficiency and traumatic brain injury. Did you know? A traumatic brain injury, or TBI, can occur as a result of a severe blow to the head. It is often the result of a sports injury, car accident, persistent domestic abuse, or falling. Many relate such head injuries to the risk of brain damage. But did you know that other parts inside your skull can also be affected? Your pituitary gland, for example, lives right underneath the brain, and it can get damaged when someone experiences a TBI. This pea-sized gland is one of the master glands within your body, controlling essential hormone production to keep you functioning well. One of the hormones a pituitary gland produces is called the human growth hormone, which does more than just help children grow big and tall. In children and adults, it makes insulin work better, bones stronger, and muscles less prone to wear, tear, and fatigue. It also helps keep your mood brighter and improves your sleep quality. If the levels of this hormone are not right, it can be dangerous. Low levels of it, or growth hormone deficiency, is a condition that often happens to someone who experienced a TBI. Symptoms of GHD include a higher level of body fat, especially around the waist, anxiety and depression, decreased sexual function, fatigue, feelings of isolation, greater sensitivity to heat and cold, and lessening of muscle mass, strength, and stamina. If you believe you've experienced a head injury, whether you consider it traumatic or not, be sure your doctor knows about it so that they can monitor you for symptoms in the brain, hormones, and beyond. There are screenings, testing, and treatment options available for those who need it. You can learn all about the glands and hormones in our endocrine systems from the clinical endocrinology experts at ACE.com. Interesting watching that uh that video from what is it the American Association of Endocrinology what is that American Association of Clinical Endocrinology okay yeah, there's a bunch of these endocrinology societies I get lost in the sauce with a lot of them um so here's my story so I ended up uh, getting testosterone replacement therapy one of the big things in all of the clinics is the use of secretagogues and these different medications for growth hormone as we know now from dr mark gordon and from other tbi experts uh, like tamara wexler and um other other doctors that are out talking about it is with tbi right it's a whole person illness you know you can't do testosterone monotherapy or um, thyroid monotherapy or magnetic residence and uh, talk therapy, lithium monotherapy, like it's just literally not how TBI works. Um, and that's why the NFL and VA is getting sued into oblivion because, well, they've treated this as a psychological condition and not as a uh, an actual endocrine um, illness. And so one of our main goals is to not only check testosterone, um, thyroid, um, I would say technically IGF-1, but um, as I've gone to learn from Dr. Tamara Wexler, that IGF-1 is not a um, signal for growth hormone, and so we have to get our growth hormone levels checked by what's called the glucagon simulation check test. And this is a outpatient procedure that you'll do in an infusion center and pretty much every major hospital can do it. And you'll go there and then they'll inject you with a medication called glucagon. Then that basically puts you into a hyp hypoglycemic state and it's not dangerous uh, when they do it in the right dosing and whatnot. Um, they put you in a hypoglycemic state and that's what releases growth hormone. And so you'll do that over the course of roughly three to four hours and they will take blood every hour and uh, test uh, what your growth hormone um, secretions are. Um, for myself, I, you know, I had to, I'm living in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. So I had to go to uh way far out to go get my test done. It was like, three or four hours away or something like that 
uh, anywhere that would actually do it. So I, uh, I, you know, I drive down there, I get, you know, ready to go to do my growth hormone simulation tests or whatnot. And, um, but I didn't realize, I understand the science behind it, but I didn't understand the reality of it, right? So when they say, oh, we're going to put you in a hypoglycemic state, oh, they're going to put you in a hypoglycemic state. So basically your brain is just flooded with, I'm just going to say insulin or, you know, whatever the, whatever the chemicals are um, that you would have floating around in your sleep. And uh, that's what you're, you're awake and that's, you know, happening. And so this kind of like weird, nauseous, but not puking feeling. I don't, it's hard to explain, but you're not dizzy. You're not spinning. It's just this weird head fog kind of uh, imbalance feeling and whatnot for a bunch of hours. So I uh, got that done and took like a month almost to get back the, the test results. And it came back to my growth hormone simulation test was completely flat. So, you know, through all of the, the security and police work and stuff that I'd done. And then all of the, um, you know, deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, getting blown up, getting in shootouts, you know, doing nonsense on the roads, you know, you're driving hundred miles an hour and then down to zero, driving hundred miles an hour, then down to zero just to get your yourself or your guys or the person that you're protecting to where they need to be. And all of that is going to be screwing up your hormones and uh, releasing cytokines and then releasing um, things that just damage the body. And then I had a third traumatic brain injury after that test. So um, after that test, I'd fell on my head um, for my service dog <laughs> who I... Uh, needed to train and needed to make the lead shorter so that I wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't have a dog coming across me with this, you know, no, this line or whatever, or the leash, you know, to the, the lead, or whatever. And, uh, so I fell on the back of my head and had that, that reaction. And, um, what I didn't understand until I talked to my doc is that growth hormone is one of the only medications that a doctor cannot prescribe off label, except in California. And I think maybe in Florida actually, but, um, you and your doctor, you say, Hey, you know, I'm feeling like crap. I don't feel good. Let's do heroin. Sure. Let's do heroin. You know, and a doc can literally give you heroin or, you know, Hey, w I think my, uh, I think my I have traumatic brain injury, so let's do lithium monotherapy with like a, a you know three thousand grams of freaking you know lithium. Sure, you know here's three thousand grams of you know of a uh, of lithium, right? You can do that, but with growth hormone, you actually have to physically have either IGF one levels that are associated with um, low growth hormone or a positive glucagon or insulin stimulation test. And so doing my research, I found out, well, you have to do this through, you know, various insurance companies will force you to do it, or then they'll force you to uh, have specific levels, but if you're a traumatic brain injury patient, then you won't have associated IGF-1 levels. So you have to do the glucagon stimulation test since you cannot take an insulin simulation test due to the risk of, uh, of seizures. And so anyone with TBI, it's contraindicated to do anything with seizures. So Toradol or various medications that could cause seizures, we're not able to utilize those medications or procedures. And so you want to stay away from that. And that's why we do the glucagon stim test. And I uh, found that out and it was a whole hoopla and process Process to go through that with my doctor and uh, it took about three months from the initial um, glucagon stem test to actually get it and I found out why is that um, when the clinic actually did the prescription they were clicking all these buttons for different medications that I wasn't taking and so I learned the hard way that you really do have to make sure that your even your doctor or their staff is actually doing the the authorizations correctly because if they don't do it then you have to be fighting with the insurance company for a ton amount of time um prescription so I ended up uh, finally getting it two days ago so I get this big, big package, whatever, and um, it's just like a little tiny inside of there. Little, it was just wrapped in all this uh, ice and stuff like that, ice packs, whatever. And I open it up. It doesn't have to be refrigerated, but they did it anyways, which is fine. And uh, it's a super tiny pen uh, needle system. And I find out that uh, 
well you know you actually do need to have some dexterity when you do this because it's these silly um insulin pen type uh situations where it's uh, in this pen format and you have to add the you have to um you have to prime the pen if you have to turn it and i've heard all these horror stories of people not putting it on the prime function and then probably accidentally because you have to scroll past doses and so they'd probably end up going on like 10 or whatever it is and then try to prime it well that's all of the medication at one time just shooting out everywhere twenty thousand dollars for the medication on the floor and I heard about it. I didn't understand what they were talking about. I open it up and it's like, oh, you have to literally scroll past all these doses to actually get to the prime function. Like, who made this? This is stupid. And uh, this is just so they could patent it and make a shit ton of money. Um, and so you get this and there's this, you know, priming functions and all these, all these doses and whatnot that are on there. And uh, I finally figure out... Um, you know, through the process of doing it that you, and two, you can't set it up ahead of time either with the needles. So it's a, a one needle per injection system. And so you've got this, there's one needle on one side and another edge of the needle on the other side. So then when you add the needle system on there, then it becomes a live vial. So I'm like, okay, well, this is crap. You can't just let it sit because all the medication is going to come out of the stinking, uh, system of the way they made this so it's like you can't even set it up ahead of time you have to do it exactly at the same time every single day and put the needle on and put the set it to the right dose and inject it um, and then you also have to have tons of dexterity so it's like well, okay tbi patients this doesn't make any sense we shouldn't be doing this like this this is not the way we should be um treating tbi patients where you have to have some sort of like you know taking off the thing for a needle, putting a needle on, turning to a dose, and then it has the sliding, like a, like one of those pe like Bic pens that you had where it's got like the retractable system. And so you've got this like push down um, retraction feature to actually inject the dose. So then, <laughs> since we're doing sub-Q, you're supposed to be doing sub-Q and then have the dexterity to hold it with one hand and then use the, the sliding function with the other. Like, who created this? Like, th like, we can't have this for, like, TBI patients or elderly or, like, anybody that would be taking this medicine. So, like, the fuck are you thinking? And uh, so I get the, you know, this whole thing, whatever, and... I, uh, you know, I start my first dose and then realize, well, when they say that you need to do it for five seconds, really you have to do it for 10, holding it down. And still, even when you retract it back, you still have to stop and wait because it's still going to push out medicine. Just, just spraying medication everywhere. A total disaster. And, uh, I realize that this is like the worst method, uh, modality in the way of doing this medication. Like you may as well just give people regular vials and just have them do it because you're not going to... But also, too, and I noticed that on the prescriptions, it's only good for 28 days. So they've built in probably two days of medication or something like that into there, which is fine. But then you're going to end up uh, releasing amount of medication that you probably shouldn't. But uh, so going through that, you know, I was able to to you know figure it out and all that and uh you know work through the the issues with that i have severe arthritis in my hands so you know for me it's a big deal and um i was able to you know figure out how to use it or whatnot and uh and get it done and um thankfully they're using a 31 gauge uh needle system which is really cool so it just goes right in and um, the injection works really quick since it's a water-based medication it goes super quick and it's able to get into your body um, I do think that I'll eventually change to like a regular syringe system and where I'm just going to get the vial and just take the medication out myself like I don't see a point in, uh, in doing uh, the stupid pen thing um, especially when you have to have a bunch of dexterity like no it's not how any of this works. This is not what we should be doing. And, uh... 
I do think that it's important for TBI patients to know that um, when it comes to these type of therapies, you also have to put your foot down with the doctors as well. That when it comes to growth hormone deficiency, we have these doctors who are myopic in their viewpoint and where they view that growth hormone can fix everything. And uh, you have to cobble together doctors to then reach your goals. And that means that you might want to have your initial consultations with like the top GH doctor. So Dr. Tamara Wexler and whoever else you find else that's a, a top growth hormone uh, doctor and get that person to do your initial prescription and then transition off to a regular doctor to maintain your prescription, but that you um, ensure that you have a group of doctors so that you don't have a myopic view because our goal with TBI first is ketamine, progesterone, stop the inflammation, then go off and do testosterone and um, thyroid and uh, growth hormone and that sort of thing. But that you, if you have to cobble up different doctors, that you do that so that you don't have a myopic view and only one specific focus because you can get into trouble that way. And like with my own doctor who did it, she's solely focused on, on growth hormone. And so we can't get in that viewpoint. Also very important with this is that we don't, mix medications together so if you're starting new medications you just want to have one new medication per week or per even two or three weeks in my opinion or longer so that you have homeostasis and then you start adding other things um, you can always have weird interactions or weird interactions with one drug and then you just stop both so you always want to do one medication at a time and then transition off to the next therapy that you add don't want to make this too long. I've already gone on for almost 20 minutes so far. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, make sure that after you've gotten your um, testosterone dialed in and your vitamin D and um, if you want off to do thyroid, then you go off and get your glucagon simulation test and get your growth hormone tested and make sure that that is optimized too. Because if it's not optimal, it needs to be replaced, period. Our whole goal within TBI treatment is all functional optimization medicine. We focus on the whole person and the totality lowering inflammation and then putting in the hormones back into the body to make you um, healthy and able to um, sustain a high quality life that uh, is focused on health and uh, patient happiness uh, which is part of the guidelines that dr morgan dollar has talked about so we have to use that as our front and main focus. And um, if some doctors can support you, get connected with the group, TRT for Warriors and Facebook. I will get you associated with a doctor. There are tons of docs in the group um, that are ready and willing to help. And uh, you don't have to suffer. You can get treatment. And you don't have to deal with the VA or some big medical system if you don't want to. Um, there are tons of docs that are out there who are able and willing to help. And uh, some that even work with regular insurance. So, you know, there's, there's that. Um, you guys have an awesome uh, week and be safe out there.